What's up everybody, it's Rafi at Zerv, and in this video I want to show you around the reveal component in Foundation. Now if you want to make a modal, or a pop-up, or whatever you want to call it, uh, that is called the reveal component in Foundation. Now reveal's been in Foundation for a long time and it started out as a playground piece, so that's how it picked up its name. Uh, so, reveal creates a pop-up or a modal. So something like this. And it really only takes two things to create a modal like this. So let me show you how to set that up. So I have an example here with a link that has a data dash open attribute on it, as you can see here. So data dash open is a um, it's a common uh, toggle component in Foundation. You'll see this on a lot of components, and this will actually open the modal. So if you have data dash open and then an ID that matches a modal, it'll open it. So right now we have example modal one. We can just do this. Um, we can change this to settings modal. Okay, and then Somewhere on your page, it doesn't have to be right after the trigger. This, these could be live at the bottom of the page. Um, we'll have our div with a class of reveal. So that is going to be your modal container. So div with a class of reveal. And then we want to make sure that ID matches the ID of the trigger. So we change that to settings modal. So let's make sure that matches. And then the other important thing is data dash reveal. This tells the JavaScript that this is a reveal or a modal. Okay, so we have our basic elements. Everything inside of this is just content that you can either use or not use. It's up to you. So this is really all you need to set up a modal. Now, a modal can be triggered from anything. So right now, we're triggering it from a link, uh, so an anchor tag, as you can see here. And on a small screen, it's going to be full screen, as you can see here. On a larger screen, though, it'll be um, horizontally centered. So let's get to a little bit larger screen so you can see that. There you go. The modal is larger and horizontally centered. Now, you can link a modal from pretty much any element, so it doesn't have to be an anchor tag. In fact, since it's an on-page uh, type of interaction, a button tag works very good for that. Uh, so it could be a button tag, and that can trigger your modal. Uh, and it could also be, you know, instead of text, it could be a button or an icon. So um, let's use an icon font here. So we could use that to trigger it. Or we can even give this a class of button. So what I'm trying to say is it doesn't matter what element you put it on. It's what matters is that you have data dash open and that this ID matches the ID of the modal content itself, which is this div with a class of reveal. Now there's some options to adjust these modals depending on your screen size or your content size. So I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Okay, so we can also change the size of our modals with some different classes. So if I click this right now, you can see that this is the default size of the modal. This would be considered medium, maybe. But it doesn't need a sizing class. But there are other sizing classes that you can add to this reveal class. So let's just chain it on here. So let's do a small class. So if we do small, you can see that now the width is constrained a little bit smaller. We can also make that tiny. So let's set it to tiny. And you can see that now it gets even narrower. Now another thing to note is that if your modal content is very tall and it overflows the edge of the page that the modal will automatically scroll inside of the container. So that's kind of a neat feature uh, that it'll do automatically for you. And we can also add the large class and make this really large, but it's not quite full width. And we can also make it full. So the full class will not only make it 
uh, 100% uh, viewport height. It'll also make it 100% viewport width. And so you can see that it now it completely fills the page, overlays it, and the scrolling is um, locked onto this uh, modal. Unless there is overflow, then it will actually scroll. So the sizing classes are really handy for that. And we can also change the behavior of the reveal modal and some of the other things that are a little bit harder to set in the JavaScript settings. So one thing that you'll probably find very handy is animation. So not only is animation kind of nicer to look at, but you can actually use it in a smart way to convey meaning or to really um, draw attention to a specific spot, especially for a modal. So we have this animation section here and there's an example of using uh, animations on the reveal modal. So on the div with a class of reveal, we're going to add some data attributes that will use foundations motion UI library to animate this in. So in and out. So I'm going to add them just right here on the end. So data dash animate in right now it's set to spin in or spin out. Now these are obviously ridiculous animations that I would probably never use in real life. Maybe, I don't know, maybe, but probably not for this. So, um, there's lots of different options. I mean, more common is to fade in and to fade out, uh, which is a lot more common. There you go. That's much nicer. So you can have animation options through the data attributes. Now, of course, this modal also works with Ajax and we have two other lessons that will help you do that if you are loading dynamic content into the reveal modal. Uh, so make sure you check out those lessons. I'll link them below. And of course, there's also tons of other JavaScript uh, attributes that you can add to this. So if we go to the plugin options, you could see some of those. Uh, so a couple things that you might use right off the bat is data dash V offset. So uh, this is something that'll create a vertical offset, but you can also see there's other things here. Data dash overlay, you can uh, set that to false and remove the overlay. Um, and then other things as well like data dash close on escape, allows the modal to close if the escape key is clicked. Very handy things that you might want to set up on this uh, modal. And you can do that with the JavaScript data attributes. So I'm going to do the data dash V offset just to show you how those work. I just copied it straight out of the docs there. Um, I'm going to put a pixel value in here of, uh, let's say 60. So this is a vertical offset. If I click this, now it's down 60 pixels below where it was before. If I change this to 100 pixels, then you'll see that it's down even lower down the page. So you have JavaScript data attributes to really configure this modal any way you want. Now we teach all of this in our Intro to Foundation class. So if you want to learn all about Foundation and its components, make sure you check that out. I'll put the link below. And thank you for watching.